In this video, we're going to look at a typical exam question on a short run production function. Here we have one column with the number of workers and a second total product or output per day. So for example, with no workers, there's no output. With one worker, that worker produces 26 units of output. Two workers together produces a combined output of 54 units, etc. So we're going to look at a couple of exam type questions that would come with a table like this. And the first one we'll look at is to calculate the marginal product per worker for this company. So the key thing here is to understand what the words marginal product means and also to know that formula. So marginal just refers to extra. Product, as we saw on the table, refers to output. So what's the extra output per worker? So once we have an additional worker employed by this company, what does that worker contribute in terms of the extra output that's produced by that company? So for example, when no workers are employed, there's no output. When one worker is employed, there's 26 units. So the marginal product or the extra product is 26 units. When two workers are employed, in other words, an additional worker, that extra worker gives us the difference here between the 54 and the 26. So we're going to use Excel in order to calculate this table. So I'm going to copy this table into the Excel file and we're going to calculate the marginal product per worker. So this is the formula you need to use. MPL, marginal product of labor, equals the change in quantity or output over the change in labor or the number of workers. So let me call it MP and we cannot calculate the first figure in the first first cell here. So we have to move on because there wasn't any preceding number of units or labor before this. So our starting point will be the second cell. So I'm just going to put in the formula that's represented by the change in quantity over the change in labor. So it's your new output or quantity or product minus your previous one. That's the change in that. And we'll divide that by the change in labor, which is one minus zero. And there we have our 26 units, something I just already referred to earlier. So we do the same. So it's the change in output or product. So 54 minus 26, divide that by our change in labor. So again, there's only one additional worker or one, the marginal worker here is one. So two minus the one. And there we have a change, or sorry, there we have marginal product equal to 28. So that additional one worker produced 28 units. And we'll, I'll, I'll do the formula calculation again and then I'll scroll down. So we have the change in output, 84, minus your 54. Divide that by your change in labor, 3 minus 2. And again, that additional worker gives us 30 units. So that's the extra product or extra output or the marginal product. And you just do the same all the way through. And you'll notice here that for the fourth worker or one of the extra worker here, all four produce 112 units, but that extra worker produces 28. The extra worker, when there's five employed, produces 25. Then we have 21 and the seventh worker gives an additional three units of output. So that's how you calculate the marginal product of labor. The next question, if each worker employed by the company is paid 100 euro per day, so that's their wage, the company's fixed costs are 500 euro per day. Fixed costs are those costs that do not change irrespective of the number of units that are being produced. So if no unit is being produced, your fixed cost is 500 euro. And if 1000 units are being produced, your fixed cost is still 500 euro per day. So you're asked here to calculate the total cost. Again, you need to know a formula, but the total cost is your fixed cost 
plus your variable cost. And again, variable cost is a cost that changes when output changes. So I'm just going to put a heading here, fixed cost. It's going to be 500 irrespective of the number of units being produced. Our variable costs, however, change. We're told it's 10, 100 euro. So that's your wage for the labor. So there's no workers. And we multiply that by 100 euro. So there's zero euro. We get the 100 euro here. You're being your variable cost coming from one worker being paid 100 euro. Your wage for your second one will be two workers for 100 euro each, which is 200 euro. And you probably guessed it, 300 euro all the way down to 700 euro. So seven workers each being paid 100 euro each. So our total cost as a result is your fixed cost plus your variable cost. So your next total cost is 600, 700, etc. Okay, so that's our total cost at each level of output. Your next question. Assume these products are being sold for 10 euro each. You're asked to calculate the total revenue and the profit and loss or profit or loss at each output level. So the, here what you need to do or what you need to know is know that formula for total revenue. So total revenue is price by quantity, P by Q. So now we have a price being 10 euro. We multiply that by the quantity or the output or the product that we already have. So you see in the second column here, total product or output per day. So what's your revenue generated if you're producing these that this level of output? So total revenue is your price times your quantity. So you have your 10 by your output or quantity. And obviously 10 by zero is gonna give you zero. Your next one, if you multiply this by 10 euro for each of the units of 26, you get 260. And likewise, multiplying each of these by 10 euro, we have your respective total revenues. We were also asked to calculate profit. And profit is your total revenue minus your total cost. So the company here is making a loss because it has fixed costs with no unit of labor being able to produce any output, giving no revenue. So you remember fixed costs remain the same irrespective of the amount of output being produced. Again, for your next scenario where you have one worker and 26 units being employed, your profit is your total revenue minus your total cost. Again, the company is making a loss, but a lower, a lower loss. So we continue on that, subtracting each total revenue by their respective total costs. And we have now what's known as a profit for each of the scenarios where you have zero to seven workers being employed. So you see the company is making a, lot, a loss initially, and then it's making its profit. So we've just answered that other question. Okay, part D, how many employees should a firm hire and what total daily output should they produce in order to maximize profits? So I suppose we have to identify where the company is maximizing its profits and then we should be able to find the daily output and the number of employees they should hire. So we're just looking for the maximum profit. And we just scroll down through our profit figures and identify your maximum profit here. So I'm just going to highlight all of this. 
this being our maximum profit, this is the number of units they should produce, and this being the number of workers they should hire. So six workers should be hired to produce 158 units of output per day, giving a profit of 480 euro for the firm. So even though 161 units could give you mistakenly, you might believe could give you a higher profit, it's not the case. And finally, one more question to look at. When does diminishing returns set in for the firm and explain why it occurs? And just a brief note on diminishing returns. When explaining diminishing returns, we must use marginal product per worker. And let's look at that calculation we saw earlier on. So here we have marginal product per worker. And if you notice, the first worker adds 26 units for the firm. The second worker will add 28 units. The third worker will give 30. The fourth worker will give 28. And you'll notice that as you employ more workers from zero to three, you see returns to labor increasing. So each of these workers are producing two units better than the previous worker. However, the fourth worker, their returns are lower. That fourth worker is only producing 28 units compared to the previous worker. The fifth is producing an even lower amount of output at 25, the sixth at 21, and the seventh is producing a dismal three units of output. So diminishing returns is where marginal product of labor is falling as each additional worker is hired. So we were asked, when does it set in? It sets in at the third worker. Because after the third worker, the returns diminishes. I hope this really helps and check out other videos that I'll be posting on economic theory and some calculations.